Hi, my name is Peter Fine, and I've been hacking for freedom. I use the word hack in its original sense to mean a clever technical trick, using a system in a way its designer didn't intend. This video is from Tunisia. It appears to show a flamethrower being used to disperse protesters. What I find compelling here is not the violation of the Geneva Conventions, but the phones. People desperately trying to get word out, to show the world what's happening. And that's why information needs to be free. Right there in grainy, glorious mobile video. If we cannot see, we cannot act. I'm an agent with Telecomics, an ad hoc disorganization of volunteer internauts who defend free communication for everyone, regardless of political affiliation. Comprised of programmers, punks, politicians, pirates, and others, Telecomics believes in person-to-person -person communication, the original P2P. I sometimes act as a liaison to Anonymous, opportunistically forging connections and collaborations in the service of common goals. On that note, let me go on record and state I don't DDoS, deface websites, or crack passwords. And if the FBI or Scotland Yard is watching this, screw you. Telecomics is yin to Anonymous is yang. If Anonymous takes sites down, Telecomics keeps them up. We are builders instead of breakers. What these groups have in common with each other and with the protests on the ground, is that they are truly leaderless and possessed by a radical passion for freedom. We operate as a duocracy, a form of organization in which the people who get things done get things done. Here's a little bit of what telecomics did for Egypt. During the Jan 25 revolution, the Mubarak regime caused a nearly total blackout of internet, mobile, and SMS service. While the net was up, Telecomics provided tools such as Tor, VPNs, and other encryption for safe communication. To restore access to censored sites, we built mirrors and proxies. Using the old school chat IRC, we served as a manual relay to Twitter, tweeting for Egyptians who were unable to do so themselves. When the net was down, we went low tech. When countries block, we devolve. We worked with ISPs and individual users to set up hundreds of dial-up modem lines. These numbers are currently active for Syria as well. We recruited amateur radio operators from around the globe to help establish radio communication. Working with Anonymous, we sent comms and medical information, including treatments for tear gas, to every fax machine in Egypt that we could find. We also set up a reverse fax service for transmitting news out of the country. Using the network tool Nmap, we scanned the entire Egyptian IP address space to find a few thousand machines that were still up. We then injected human readable messages into their web server logs. Future development projects include internet live CDs using off-the-shelf hardware to run a local Usenet message board, a wiki of analog street communication tactics such as wheat pasting and sign making, and a how-to for building two-way radios from repurposed consumer electronics. We've been able to reuse much of this work in Libya, Syria, Iran, Yemen, Bahrain, and Wisconsin. Which was good, because after working 20 hours a day for 8 days on Egypt, I really needed some sleep. This is an exciting time to be a person who can use a computer. The cause of freedom calls all of us. Not only programmers, but writers and artists, academics and filmmakers, philosophers and trolls. We have the power to make a real difference in the world, to help people achieve what they want for themselves. It's been a long, long winter for freedom in the Middle East and the rest of the world, but we're beginning to see signs of spring. We are Telecomics. Join us.